Hi everyone, this is Medina, a car artist and video game developer. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through my process of how we can approach texturing leather. We'll create two types of leather using a non-destructive approach, and then we'll combine those two to create a quick third variation. This tutorial is suitable for absolute beginners, and I'll do my best to show you how easy it is to use Substance Painter for character assets. Let's start with the pre-existing jacket model and jump straight to Substance Painter to start baking and texturing. In our first chapter, we're going to look at importing our mesh into Substance Painter and bake some base texture maps that will be needed for texturing. So here's the mesh I will be texturing. It's a leather jacket that was built in Marvel's Designer and slightly processed in ZBrush. For the purposes of gaining more resolution, the jacket is split into four sets of texture sheets. These texture sheets are offset by one tile towards the right, and these UVs are also known as UDMs. What Substance Painter will do with these UDMs is it will create four materials, meaning one material per UV tile, but it will allow us to paint across those UV tiles seamlessly, as if we're just using a single material. If you're interested in how to actually build this jacket, you can check out this tutorial here. It's a fairly detailed walkthrough on how to build this jacket in Marvel's Designer, you can find the link to this tutorial in my ArtStation profile. Now, I'm going to be using this version of Substance Painter. The main difference with this release is that it allows you to paint across your deems. But really, most of the tools we're going to be using should also be available in the older versions. Let's go ahead and import our mesh. Go to File, New. In the pop-up window, under File, select your mesh file. Set the document resolution to 4K. I'm going to leave my template at PBR Metallic Roughness. The normal format is software dependent, so if you're authoring textures for Unreal Engine, then leave it at DirectX. And check this Compute Tension Space per Fragment box. In the UV Tile settings, make sure the Use UV Tile workflow is on, and choose Preserve UV Tile Layout per Material, and enable painting across tiles. Now, let's quickly look at navigation. By default, it works like Maya. To pan the view, hold Alt key and the middle mouse button. To rotate, Alt key and the left mouse button. If you need to zoom in and out, use Alt and right mouse button. To move the light around the model, hold the Shift key and the right mouse button and move the mouse left and right to rotate the light around the model. All right. When it comes to UI, here on the top right, you can see all the materials that the model is holding. You can toggle the visibility of each material and that will hide or reveal the parts the material is applied to. This material is applied to the mesh that has UDMs and you can see them listed at the bottom. What I'm gonna do now is instead of going over each menu, I'm gonna go ahead and hide the menus that I'm not gonna be using that often so we can unclutter the view. I'll track the menu on the canvas and close it. Let's drag this one out and close it too. All the closed menus are going to be accessible through here and we'll be using them as we need them. Now I have a secondary monitor, so I'll tear off my shelf and position it on my other screen to maximize the canvas. All right, now let's bake our model. Navigate to the texture set menu and scroll down. Click on Bake Mesh Maps. We need to bake all these maps in order to start texturing, but I suggest that you turn everything off and bake a small normal map first as a test bake. So I'll leave the resolution on 512 for now. I also don't have a high poly, so I'm going to use my current low poly as my high poly and basically bake it on itself. Let's set the anti-aliasing sample to 2 and see what we have. All right, our maps are now baked and automatically set to be used as our base normal map. The number 4 means that there have been 4 maps baked, one for each UDM. If you go to the 2D window here and zoom out, you will see that we have 1, 2, 3, 4 UV layouts baked. So everything looks correct. 
we can go ahead and bake the rest of the maps at a high resolution. Switch back to the 3D view and click on the Bake Mesh Maps again. Turn on the rest of the maps and choose 4K for the final resolution. Let's go for a higher anti-aliasing too. I think 4 would be enough for our case. Perhaps when it comes to the ID map, make sure that you've set up the correct color source. I'm not going to use the ID map in this project, so I'll go ahead and turn this map off. All right, all look good. Hit the Bake Selected Texture button and let the model bake. This might take a while depending on your hardware, so I'll speed up the video and come back to inspect the results once it's done baking. Alright, all the maps are now baked. Let's have a look at the model and see if there are any artifacts. Everything looks clean. At this point, we're pretty much ready to start texturing. I'm going to turn off this menu and save the file. And in our next lesson, we're going to look at some references to start building our first material.